Active transport is one of the mechanisms by which substances are transported across a cell membrane. This mechanism requires an energy source to move the molecules against their gradients. Molecules are transported by transporter proteins which are usually called pumps. The pumps that change the net electrical charge of the cell membrane are called electrogenic pumps while the pumps whose functions do not affect the net electrical charge of the cell membrane are called electroneutral pumps. Carrier proteins or pumps are divided into three groups based on the number of molecules that they transport and the transport directions. Uniporter carriers transport only one molecule into or out of the cell. Symporter carriers transport two different molecules in the same direction. And antiporter carriers transport two different molecules in opposite directions. Primary active transport and secondary active transport are two types of active transport mechanisms. Primary active transport, which is also known as direct active transport, directly uses a source of energy such as ATP, redox energy, and photon energy to transport molecules across a cell membrane. The transport of substances such as sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium ions is done by this mechanism. Primary active transporters are divided into four groups. P-type transporters, F-type transporters, V-type transporters, and ABC transporters. Sodium-potassium ATPase pump is an important and well-studied example of P-type transporters. This pump has a high binding affinity for sodium ions. The binding of three sodium ions through the pump triggers ATP hydrolysis. A phosphate group binds to the pump and causes phosphorylation and deformation of the pump. Sodium ions are then removed from the pump and released into the extracellular space. At this time, the pump has a binding affinity for potassium ions. The binding of two potassium ions to the pump separates the phosphate group from the pump, and the pump returns to its original shape and opens toward the intracellular space. Now the pump's binding affinity for potassium ions decreases, and two potassium ions are separated from the pump and released into the intracellular space. The whole cycle can be restarted. Secondary active transport, which is also called indirect active transport, does not use the energy source directly. The energy that is required for this transport mechanism is supplied by an electrochemical gradient. In this way, the movement of an ion in the direction of its electrochemical gradient provides the driving force to move the other molecule in the opposite direction of its gradient. There are two types of secondary active transport mechanisms, symport and antiport. Symporters and antiporters are the transporters that are used in this type of transport. In symport, two different substances move in the same direction. The entry of two sodium ions and one glucose molecule into the cell via the sodium glucose transporter is an example of symport or co-transport. The movement of sodium ions down their electrochemical gradient provides the driving force to move the glucose molecule against its gradient. In antiport, two different substances move in opposite directions. For example, when three sodium ions enter the cell down their electrochemical gradient, one calcium ion goes out of the cell against its gradient.